carries a two-year jail term if you're convicted. Uh, you know, so they're basically, once again, attempting to misuse the criminal justice system to silence a critic. You know, the Unitarian Universalist Association wanted me to remove the Emerson Avenger blog posts about Unitarian Universalists who'd actually been convicted of committing such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. The only blog posts on the Emerson Avenger blog that speak about Unitarian Universalist pedophiles and or rapists, and I say and or because one of them combined pedophilia and rape, one of them was convicted of raping a neighbor's daughter who was younger than 12 years old at the time of the rape. He was also convicted of raping a female family member who was younger than 12 years old at the times that the rapes took place. Um, so this was a pedophile rapist and that's exactly how I described him in uh, the Emerson Avenger blog posts that spoke about him being convicted of such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. The Unitarian Universal Association tried to intimidate me into removing that blog post, I presume because they never properly identified exactly which blog post they were talking about. Uh, but as I said, you know, it's, it's just pure logical deduction that while well, the only blog post in which I mention rapists and or pedophiles on the Emerson Avenger blog are blog posts about Unitarian Universalists who actually were convicted of these crimes, actually went to jail for committing these crimes, therefore are not unfounded at all as alleged by Steichman Elliott, Barristers and Solicitors Litigation Lawyer, I make for Mark andre Coulomb. You know, and that, that's what we're protesting today and, and have, you know, put an emphasis on, you know, in the last little while, the last year or so. Um, you know, my picket sign in my right hand, which is part of a two-part series, says Unitarian Universalists misuse Canada's blasphemy law to cover up and deny pedophilia and rape. I consider that picket sign slogan to be very, very truthful. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to go into detail on a picket sign. I mean, you can do it. You could write a whole paragraph and put it on a picket sign, but how many people are going to take the time to read it? You know, the Generally speaking, if you've got a picket sign calling attention to something, it's best to keep it uh, comparatively brief because, you know, someone walking by or a car driving by, you know, A, doesn't have time to read a sentence or a paragraph, and B, if the print's too small, they're not going to be able to read it anyway. So if you want your print to be a reasonable size and readable from a, a good distance away, which as can be seen, you know, that, that's what I try to do with my picket signs. Um, you have to keep it comparatively brief. You can't go into complete detail about exactly what's going on. But I, I think it, uh, in that, the UUA, Unitarian Universal Association, did in fact hire Steichman Elliott, Barristers and Solicitors Litigation Lawyer, Maitre Marc-Andre Coulomb, to accuse me of the criminal act of blasphemous libel uh, on the pretext that I had allegedly made unfounded and vicious allegations to the effect that ministers of the association engage in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. You know, and when it's very, very clear from the cease and desist demand letter that what they were seeking was the uh, deletion uh, memory holding, I like to use that term, of blog posts about convicted pedophiles and rapists, well then I think this uh, picket sign slogan is very accurate and truthful. Uh, so one more time, Unitarian Universalists misuse Canada's blasphemy law to cover up and deny pedophilia and rape.